Hey everyone, me again. So suppose you want to start collecting World War II pistols. I mean actual World War II pistols, not just World War II designs that were produced well after the war. Uh, you've probably come to find they've gotten very expensive. 1911s, Lugers, uh, Vis 35s, uh, TT33s, again talking about World War II dated ones, not you know post-war clones. Uh, all those things are well into the thousands. And so one is kind of left wondering, well, is there anything left that's relatively affordable, and at the same time, you can get ammo for at pretty much any self-respecting gun store. You don't have to dig around online. There's a couple options, but one that really stands out as particularly underappreciated is the Hungarian uh, Femaru 37M, which is what we see in front of us here. This would have been the uh, Hungarian military's standard pistol during World War II. Uh, the Hungary did participate in World War II on the side of the Axis, probably most notably at the Battle of Stalingrad, so this is legitimately a World War II pistol. Now, it should be noted, there are actually two primary versions of this gun. Uh, the Hungarians made one for their own use, like we see in front of us. Uh, they also did a version under contract for the Germans. Uh, the German one, of course, is rarer, more desirable, more collectible, and they're fairly easy to tell apart, fortunately. So, for instance, the German pistol is actually chambered in 32 auto. The uh, Hungarian model, like we see here, is in 380. They would have different markings on the slides, and the Germans actually wanted a thumb safety added to the design as well. These original pistols don't have any safety aside from this uh, grip safety here. So you have a single action pistol that's hammer fired and only a grip safety. Probably wouldn't be a very marketable manual of arms today, but it's a product of a different time. What can I say? The pistol feeds from a single stack seven round magazine, as we see here. Um, it is, of course, heel release. Uh, this back here is the lanyard loop, by the way. So this is straight blowback operated. There's no uh, breech locking mechanism. Takedown of these is extremely simple, probably more so than most any other World War II era standard issue pistol. It's just a matter of locking the slide into this uh, rear uh, notch right here. Let me see if I can do this on camera, of course. Just like that. And then rotating the barrel out. It comes out like this. And of course, once you release the slide, we're apart. And so here's, you can see the grooves that uh, the barrel locks into. The slide, all we have here is just the recoil spring and guide rod. A uh, very simple pistol. It's very robust, very well made, you know, considering it's only 380. This assembly is just the reverse. Let me see if I can get this done on camera. So far, so good. And that's it. We're back together. So, very well-made gun. They're relatively compact and light uh, by the standards of World War II pistols, just for reference, you know, here we can kind of compare to a Tokarev, kind of a more common, well-known design, I suppose. And as you can see, it is considerably more compact in pretty much every dimension. Um, I guess height-wise, with this little uh, pinky rest, it's probably a little taller. By the way, there are magazines out there for these that have this feature uh, and some that don't doesn't bother me too much. Some people kind of uh, kind of knock it. In my case, though, I wouldn't be able to get my whole hand on this grip, and uh, it's a pretty tiny gun, so it being there, it's kind of helpful in my opinion. I guess if you were to carry this thing, you, it would kind of get in the way, but probably wouldn't be the best idea anyways. In terms of production numbers, I'm not sure how many were made because I found a few different sources and they all say different things. Uh, there was one source that says about 185,000 were made. Uh, there's a Hungarian channel that says about 250,000 were made. That's a pretty drastic difference. Both of those sources say that that does not include the uh, German contract pistol. So that's not what the source of the disagreement is. But the point is, um, it's probably a couple hundred thousand. Uh, so it's not the rarest pistol in the world, but it's not the most common thing either. Uh, but that's really kind of the, the gist of what the gun is, a kind of a quick overview. Um, so if you do see one, they tend to be priced right around the 500s. It kind of is subject to luck. Obviously, these are not available in a primary market anymore. So, you know, it's whatever you can find it for at, you know, pawn shops and gun shows and gun stores and that sort of thing. Uh, but they're not terribly expensive. They're very cool. They're, you know, historically interesting um, as I like to say about some of the other things I've kind of highlighted, you'll probably be the only one amongst your friends that has one. So definitely keep an eye out. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really about all. Thank you for watching, of course, as always.